This week we're going to start out talking about exponential functions. For some of you, this is going to be a review from maybe like your last semester of pre-calculus or Algebra 2 back in high school. And for some of you, this actually might be brand spanking new. So let's talk a little bit about exponential functions. Before we get into the math of them, I just want to say that we use these things every single day in the real world. Uh, anytime we want to model unlimited growth or decay, we have to use an exponential function. All right, and so that comes into play with money. All right, we've certainly um, heard this lately uh, when it comes to the national debt. And the reason why so many people don't understand the severity of the national debt is because of the exponential growth factor. Um, it's not just any kind of linear or quadratic or even power growth, but it's an exponential growth of that um, debt. All right, we also uh, see this come up with bacterial growth, um, given an unlimited food supply, uh, oftentimes population uh, without a, um, any kind of um, constraint uh, like environmental resources. And then lastly, radioactive decay. Uh, radioactive decay is usually the, the typical yet boring word problems uh, we have to, to use with exponential functions. All right, so the definition of the exponential function. All right, an exponential function f with base b is defined by f of x equals b to the x or y equals b to the x where b is a positive constant other than 1, okay, and x is any real number. All right, so pay attention that how and how this is very different than what we've seen before. All right, let me, oops, I don't know what happened there. Okay, so we have seen functions where we have maybe x squared, all right, we've seen polynomial functions where we're taking x to a fixed power. And note how this looks different than the exponential functions. In an exponential function, x is the varying power, all right? And we have some fixed base that here we're going to use the letter b for, all right? And b cannot be 1, and b has to be greater than 0. Why can b not be 1? Well, is it really interesting to graph 1 to every single power? Absolutely not, because 1 to any power is simply 1. And so we'll just get a constant function at 1. All right, so let's talk a little bit more about these. All right, so how do we evaluate an exponential function? All right, so let's say that f of x equals 42.2 times 1.56 to the x power models the average amount spent, f of x in dollars, at a shopping mall after x hours. What's the average amount spent to the nearest dollar after three hours at the shopping mall? All right, so how do we go about looking at this? All right, so we substitute three for the x. So x is going to be hours shopping. All right, we want to know after three hours, so we plug three in for the x. All right, now be careful here with your order of operations. Okay, uh, we want to make sure we get 1.56 raised to the 3 before we multiply 42.2. This goes back to PEMDAS, or please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. We have to do the exponent first. And when we type this in our calculator, we're getting roughly 160. All right, so after three hours at a shopping mall, the average amount spent is $160. All right, probably not true for Miley Cyrus, who's uh, uh, pictured there in the photo. Uh, she probably spends $160 in about 2.5 seconds. All right, so the natural base E. All right, we're going to do a lot with E. All right, so the number E is defined as the value, and we have in parentheses here 1 plus 1 over n raised to the n. All right, and E is what we are going to get as n gets larger and larger and larger. And you guys, this is going to come up um, in the third lecture in this series when I talk to you about compound interest, all right? Um, and maybe you remember compound interest versus a formula called PERT, which we'll see in just a little bit, all right? But if we take n and, and take it towards infinity, so we're blowing up n. So the denominator, and let me grab my pen here again, the denominator is getting humongous, okay? And our power up here 
is also getting humongous. Okay, well, what's going to happen is we approximate E, all right, and to nine decimal places, we're getting 2.718828, blah, blah, blah. All right, there's actually infinite non-repeating decimals. It is an irrational number, much like pi. All right, so the irrational number E, and we'll call it approximately 2.72, is called the natural base. All right, the function f of x equals e to the x is called the natural exponential function. And we're going to do a lot this week and uh, the week after Thanksgiving on e to the x versus ln x. Okay, and so we'll, we'll, talk, we'll use these because they are the ones used the most. Okay, as opposed to bases of say two or three and logs of um, different bases as well. All right, and just so you know, I do not want anyone typing in their calculator 2.72 in the place of E. You have a script E button on your calculator. If you have any questions whatsoever finding it, make sure you ask myself or one of the assistants in the lab. All right, so how are we going to evaluate this? All right, the exponential function f of x equals 1,066 times E raised to 0.042x. All right, well, I'm going to say this function models the gray wolf population of the Western Great Lakes x years after 1978. All right, protect the gray wolf's population in the recovery area, pro project the gray wolf's population in the recovery area in 2012. So first we have to figure out what the heck are we going to plug in? Because what we're not going to plug in is 2012. All right, so what do you think? How are we going to get our x? Well, we're going to take 2012 and we're going to subtract 1978, all right, and that's going to be, give us 34 years, so we're going to plug 34 in for x, all right. Again, be very careful with your order of operations, okay. Um, we're going to get, first thing we're going to do, if we're going to do this piecewise, is multiply 0 .042 times 34, all right. We're going to get this number. And then we're going to do e raised to the number we just got, okay? And then last, we're going to multiply by 1,066, all right? And this indicates that the gray wolf population in the Western Great Lakes, all right, is projected to be approximately 4,446, all right? So again, be very careful. In my opinion, these problems are very easy. It is straight up plug and chug math. All right, what's going to get you is order of operations. So if you are fuzzy at all on how to type this in your calculator, make sure I clear it up with you before.